Hey everybody, welcome to the Hamakua Homestead. If you're new here, my name is Tiffany and today we are pressure canning. I got today's recipe off of healthycanning.com and we are making a meal starter. It is beef stroganoff in a jar. Now of course when you think of beef stroganoff you're going to think meat and noodles and mushrooms but there are no noodles in canning, no thickeners or anything. So that's why this is a meal starter. So we're just going to go ahead and mix all of our ingredients into one big bowl to start out. Now, according to the recipe, we are going to go ahead and add ground pepper, salt, thyme, parsley, tomato paste, and Worcestershire sauce into a bowl and combine well. Next, we are gonna go ahead and cut up our garlic. It says to do two cloves, so naturally I'm doing four. We are going to put in our mushrooms, onions, and then finally our beef. The recipe on the website says that it does two quart jars. That's not enough for me to want a pressure can, so I'm gonna go ahead and figure out which uh, measurements of our recipe that I'm going to do based on how much beef I defrosted. So I'm going to go ahead and get that weighed out first. Okay, so our beef weighs about just under seven pounds. So if we go according to the recipe, we're going to triple the recipe on the website. Okay, so we've got that step of the process done. We've got our onions, mushrooms, and garlic added in with our it looks like a tomato sauce and we're gonna go ahead and mix it up get it all well incorporated. That looks like it is well coated, well incorporated into everything. So now we're gonna move on to the next step. And the next step is making our broth. I'm gonna go ahead and use beef bouillon for this recipe. So as every recipe usually does, this one says to cut off the excess fat. I'm not doing that because this is the second roast that I'm cutting up and the first one had virtually no fat on it whatsoever. It was actually from a different cow that we had slaughtered. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave the fat on. I'm cutting the meat into about one to two inch cubes, and I'm not being extremely precise about it because it's gonna cook down and it's all gonna be so tender after it's pressure canned anyway. Okay, so that part of the process is done. We've got our mixture, we've got our meat all cut up. Now I'm gonna combine the two and make sure that the meat is coated in all of that good sauce too. I couldn't find beef broth, so I'm, uh, I have to use chicken broth, but that's okay, it's not the end of the world. That looks pretty well coated to me. I'm gonna go ahead and get our canner going and get these put into jars. I just got the water put into the canner. Now it's going to slowly heat up while we fill up our jars. Now this is a new type of recipe for me. I haven't done mostly meat. I've usually done either just meat or halfway with contents and then halfway with broth to make a soup. So this is kind of an in-between that the recipe is saying to do. It says to pack the jars kind of tight, but not tight, not tightly. So we're just gonna go ahead and make sure that we leave enough room for enough broth so that we can make our roux with it when we're ready to take it out of the jar and make our stroganoff. So I think it's pretty well mixed in there already as far as the ingredients go. So I'm not too worried about trying to make sure we get a good mix of this and a good mix of that. I think it's already done. So what I think I'm gonna go ahead and do is fill each of our seven jars three quarters of the way, see where we end up with. I don't wanna have you know this much in one jar left over because what am I gonna do with that? So I'm gonna just go ahead and do three quarters, see what we do. All right, well, we have a few scoops left, so I guess we are gonna be closer on target to the recipe um, being a little bit fuller in each jar. And you know what? I guess that's what happens when you actually follow a recipe, which I'm not used to. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and top off our jars and then get our broth in there. We're 
ready for our next step, we're gonna go ahead and take our hot, what should be beef broth, and fill up our jars to a one inch head space. I did not pack the meat down inside here. There are plenty of air holes that I would like the broth to go down into. So we're gonna use our poker and try to get that broth to go into all the air bubbles, not only to fit more broth, but of course we don't want any air pockets down in there. That does not make for safe canning. I think I made way more broth than I needed to. That's okay. After we have our jar to a one inch head space, we are gonna go ahead and clean, clean our rims. Get all that junk off there. That's gonna affect your seal if it is left on there. Get your canning lid. Get your canning ring. Fingertip tight and into the can. Rinse and repeat. Another thing that I just thought of, there's a lot of mushrooms in here and they have not been exposed to moisture. They're pretty dry already. So as, well, it was exposed to the tomato sauce, but that's not much. It did absorb some of that, but now it's going to absorb a bunch of this um, broth. And that's probably why I keep having to add more and more headspace or more and more broth to maintain our headspace as we're going along. Okay, so we are all buttoned up in our canner. It is nice and hot. Everything's coming up to heat and everything is on track. So I'm going to go ahead and let this go until there's a steady steam steady stream of steam coming out of this vent right here. We're gonna let that vent for a full 10 minutes, put our weight on, then I'm going to go ahead and leave it at 15 pounds of pressure until this starts to jiggle. Then we're gonna go ahead and set our timer for 90 minutes. And I'll bring you back and show you what the jars look like when they come out of the canner. Well, the other day when I was making our stroganoff, uh, our power went out, so I didn't have any lights to be able to show you the jars when they came out of the canner. Don't worry, I have a propane stove, so the canning was fine. It was just a matter of being able to show you. So I figured I'd bring you back today and show you the end result and how to prepare it coming out of the jar. So first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and boil some noodles. For a weeknight like this, you can use any type of noodles you want. Don't be picky. I wouldn't necessarily use spaghetti noodles, that sounds a little weird, but you do you. While our noodles are boiling, we're gonna go ahead and get our sauce ready. First thing we're gonna do, we'll put in about two tablespoons or so of butter into our pan and get that heated up. About two tablespoons. Oh goodness, you're all fogged up. That was about two tablespoons of butter and two tablespoons of flour. And we're just gonna cook it down enough to get rid of the raw flour flavor. Noodles are done. All right, now we can swap back over here to the good burner. So that's cooked down enough. We're gonna go ahead and open up our jar. And I'm gonna slowly add in The broth. Now you can play with the um, ingredients. You can put in a little less flour or a little more flour depending on how thick you want it. This is obviously on the thicker side. That is most of the broth out of there. I'm going to go ahead and add the rest of the jar. And with that, this is totally <laughs> optional as well. I'm going to add a little bit of cream as well. Keep the temperature down low. The cream will add to the creaminess, of course, but it's also going to uh, make it not so thick 
I made mine especially thick just now, but I think after it heats up, this is gonna be pretty ideal. It's really as easy as that. I'm gonna go ahead and stick a lid on here, let the whole thing warm up, meld together a little bit, and then we will dish it up. Okay, here's the moment of truth. It looks so good, smells so good. Mm-hmm. It's delicious. Absolutely delicious. I highly suggest that you guys try this one. Can't go wrong. Now, I don't eat noodles, otherwise I would go ahead and put them on a bowl full of noodles. Uh, but my son and my sweetheart, they eat noodles and they are going to love this. In order to dish it up, I'm just going to make a bowl of noodles, put this on top. Here you go, easy peasy. The way that the flavors all meld together and mm, it just, it hits your tongue in such a beautiful way. It's delicious. I hope that this encourages you guys to go ahead and keep going, keep moving, keep canning, keep being creative. Thank you so much for joining me today on the Hamakua Homestead. I will see you again soon.